every morning is pretty much the same here at the boat. I get up, I try to find the projects that can be done, and if I'm very lucky, I actually get something done. I'm in the bilge of our boat, grinding away at some of the original gel coat to prepare the area for building a second wood epoxy and fiberglass freshwater tank. Of course, I made an earlier video about the whole process. I will repeat the project again, but here on the starboard side of the boat. Although I have a drop sheet covering the grinding and the sanding area, you better believe that the entire interior of our boat is getting a good coating of white powder which I will later brush and vacuum up to reuse and recycle into a food recipe? Ew, bad joke. Just to be clear, this is the edible undertakings part of the video now. About 400 grams of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and one egg for every 100 grams or so of flour. Or no eggs at all if you want, although they will help to keep the raviolis intact. The homemade flavor is worth the extra time and effort, and in this point of the process at least, making your own pasta is relatively simple and cheap. Just knead the dough until it becomes smooth and uniform, just like bread. Add some pinches of water slowly and only if necessary. You want the dough to be pretty sturdy. You need almost no water if you make it with eggs. Working on the filling now, we're going to make a fresh cheese, un queso blanco, which is similar to Indian paneer. We've picked up three liters of whole milk. Even though it's ultra pasteurized, as long as we can get it to curdle, it'll work out well. We have some clean cloth over a pasta strainer, freshly squeezed lime, and a nice big bowl to catch the whey in. We put the milk to boil over low to medium heat, stirring very, very regularly. I really don't want the milk to boil over or burn into the bottom of the pan. The milk doesn't actually need to start boiling. I don't have a thermometer to regulate the temperature though, so I bring it to the point just where I can start to see a little steam rising off the pan. We pour the lime juice in and turn off the heat. I watch the mix begin to curdle and let it sit for a couple of minutes to separate and cool off before pouring. The camera failed to capture the pour, but you can see here that we then gently help the cheese to drain the whey into the bowl by rocking it back and forth. We wrap up the package and press it down with anything that can be used as a weight to squeeze out the moisture. We then use the leftover whey as a warm liquid base to begin making a bread dough. A little while later, the pressed curd, or queso blanco, or paneer, is ready to crumble. It has a slight zest lime flavor. Great for many uses, including stuffing our ravioli. Meanwhile, the pasta dough has been set aside in a cool place in a plastic bag to stop it from drying out. We get to use the family hand crank pasta machine, which is always a lot of fun. By pressing it through the rollers repeatedly, we can evenly flatten out all the dough until we get a manageable thinness. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can simply use a rolling pin or wine bottle to have this kind of fun as well. From here, we could just cut some rough rudimentary noodles and throw them all in a boiling pot of water, but instead we're going to complicate everything. Our lovely chef friend and patron lent us this torture device of a square ravioli stamp. And as the pasta quickly is drying on the countertop, we fill them up with cheese and some simmered down spinach. You can use water or an egg to slightly wet the edges and to help close the ravioli. Along with the usual Robbie made tomato sauce, the ravioli are an Italian flavor blast. Now admittedly, that's a lot of carbohydrates, so now we have to go catch some protein. On occasion, Robbie can convince various friends to bring us out on their working engine vessels to catch some food. This time, we're fishing with our landlord and his vessel which has outriggers. Those things that look like bug antennae. We mosey on out to the sargassum seaweed patches, where the Dorado supposedly like to hang out. Robbie is testing out the effectiveness of using ballyhoo baitfish. Local fishermen catch these fish using casting nets. And he has the usual selection of hoochies as well. I think someone has a little smaller, do a different run.
The outriggers allow him to set the fishing rods way out. Another set of rods a little further in, and even a hand reel near the center of the boat, making a total of five lines in the water at any one time. When there's possibly a fish on the line, everyone does their part to clear up the lines and avoid tangles by reeling one in. Which one? This one? Or the Esther? A pro would turn off the drag clicker noise while doing this. No, I saw oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, chiquito. The ice for drinks goes towards the cause of cooling the fish, and Robbie slits the throat right away to kill and bleed as soon as possible. Also straight away, Robbie gets the rods rigged up again, because if there's one wahoo around, there are bound to be others. Not a wahoo this time, but rather a beautiful dorado. I'm keeping an eye on the horizon because it is typical for lightning storms to roll into this area around this time every day. Our landlord reels in a big barracuda, which normally we would do everything in our power to throw back, but apparently he's not worried about Ciguatera and wants to keep this big guy. Either way, the hook is lodged pretty well into that big closed toothy maw. Out on the water, we usually follow the birds. Generally, they're a good indicator of activity going on in the water beneath them. But out in these parts, they're misleading. Sometimes they just circle around or assemble for fun, and not at all to indicate a feeding zone. In any case, it's been a good day, relaxing with the birds, Robbie enjoying himself, and all of us catching some food. But just as the rain clouds begin to chase us back into the harbor, the Bonito arrive, and Robbie catches a few on the smaller hoochie lines. With the dark sky and approaching wind and rain, the two guys on the boat are still holding out for another big fish, like a wahoo or a dorado. But a couple more of the staple bonito is what they'll get. Now you've probably seen quite a bit of fish filleting in these videos, but now you can see what we like to do with the leftover bits. I usually give the belly, wings, skeleton, and head a quick boil to help remove the meat, and then clean it all off being careful to remove all the bones and spikes. We have a couple of leftover veggies, eggs, and fresh herbs as well, so we're going to mix up a batch of fish cakes, croquetas or croquettes, depending on what language preference we have that day chopped onion, garlic, carrots and herbs, eggs to bind it all together, some breadcrumbs to make the base, and at the last moment we find some green peas to use up as well. It's a sunny day today, so we bust out the solar cooker, and in about 45 minutes, we have our meal. Delicious. You did a good job. A nice glass of wine to top it all off. And it is time to enjoy the good life along this canal.